Guys, it's Fonzie with DipYourCar.com. I'm very excited to share this video with you guys today. I'm going to be introducing to you the new Dip Your Car sprayer system. This is a system that was designed by Dip Your Car with the backing of Earlix, the best HVLP and sprayer system company on the planet, specifically designed to spray Plasti Dip and Rubber Dip spray products. So I'm going to show you everything that's included in the kit, how to set it up, how to clean it and maintain it, some safety tips and obviously show you some application tips as well so that you're comfortable and confident using this new evolved system to spray Plasti Dip on your car or your project. It's Fonzie, this is the new Dip Your Car Sprayer System, enjoy the video. Now I'm going to quickly walk you through everything that should be included in your new Dip Your Car Sprayer System. First you've got the Dip Your Car Sprayer handle itself, you've got the DYC turbine, You've got your spare parts kit, the quick connect hose, and the mixing wand that goes into the front of your drill. That's everything that should be included in your kit. Now I'm gonna walk you through piece by piece. Remember there's a lot of people watching this video where you've used a system similar to this in the past. For example, the 3500. There's some very specific differences that I'm gonna point out that are gonna make a big impact on the way that you spray the Plasti Dip and Rubber Dip spray products. There's also a lot of people that this is going to be their first time using a system like this using Plasti Dip, so I'm going to make sure I can walk you through so you can learn the functionalities and understand this product really well before you use it. Now the first piece we're going to go over is the new Dip Your Car Turbine. Now this is the engine, this is the heart and soul, this generates the airflow for the sprayer system. Now if you've never used a system like this, there's some pretty basic features to it. You've got your on and off switch in the front. You've got your section here where you take the plastic section or the plastic push-in piece of the quick connect hose, push that right into the front. In the back area, you've got a little plastic compartment that comes off. Now on the back of the piece that's removed, you've got some storage here for some extra needles. You've got some storage inside for some spare parts. And then you've got your air filter here. Now this can be easily removed and I suggest that you clean this after every single time you use the Dip Your Car Sprayer. This uh, air filter is going to be catching dirt, debris, and overspray. So in order to make sure it's got optimal airflow and power every time you use it, whenever you're done with your project, remove the air filter, clean it off, and make sure it's dry, put it right back in there. Now you do get an extra air filter with the spare parts kit, but we'll cover that a little bit later. Now, What's different about this turbine than any of the other turbines we've used in the past, for example, the 3500? Not only is it smaller and more efficient, but it's actually quite a bit more powerful too. The 3500 system puts out about 2 PSI. This system in hose puts out about 3 PSI. That's about a 50% increase in power, and the CFM is increased as well. So what does increased PSI and CFM mean as far as spraying Plasti Dip? Well, the increased power is going to result in better atomization. Better atomization means a finer misting, smaller droplets of Plasti Dip coming out of the front of the gun, which is going to translate into a better, smoother finish. So this system here, this turbine, makes a very big impact on the ability to get a smoother, better finish when using Plasti Dip on your car. Really think you guys are going to like the increases here. Now we're going to move from the turbine to the new quick connect hose. Now there's several reasons why I absolutely love this hose. The first thing you're going to notice when you pick it up is it's very strong, it's heavy duty, and it's durable. This hose can be thrown around, it can be stepped on, it can be run over. This will be the last hose you need for this system. It's going to last you. It's also over 16 feet long, so it's going to separate you quite a bit from the turbine to where you're actually spraying. It gives you a ton of freedom and ton of maneuverability when you're walking around your car. Now, as far as the ends are concerned, you've got the plastic push-in end, which goes into the front of the turbine. And now you've got the quick connect feature that works very similar to an air tool for an air compressor. This goes right into the back and locks in place into the back of the gun. Once it's locked in place, it will not be able to be removed, it's not going to pop out of the back of the gun, and it allows the gun to swivel 360 degrees. This will help avoid the hose and the gun in the system getting twisted up while you're working. I can't tell you how many times in the middle of a video I went to go fill the gun up or I've been maneuvering around and I've had to untwist the gun as I'm working. This will completely avoid that. 
Also, the inside of this hose is a smooth bore. It's not crinkly like the outside is. Some of the plastic hoses we've used in the past are crinkly all the way through. That creates a lot of turbulence, slowing the air down, and it also can generate a lot of heat. So the air coming out of this gun should stay cooler with that smooth bore. A lot of benefits in this little piece of this hose that are gonna really impact the way that you spray the plastic in. Now we're gonna cover the dip your car sprayer handle itself. Now, if you've ever used a gun like this before, it may look similar to the ones that you've used in the past, but there are very specific differences that I'll make sure I point out that are gonna make a very, very big impact on how you spray. If you've never used a system like this, I'll walk you through some of the simple functionality so you can become comfortable with it. Now we've got our 32 ounce paint cup here. You may see a 48 ounce paint cup in the future, but for right now, we're just gonna showcase the 32 ounce. On the bottom of the gun, we've got our plastic pickup tube here. This can be rotated or removed for cleaning. Now, because we're spraying cars and most of the time spraying either forward or down, you always want to make sure that the pickup tube is facing forward. That makes sure, depending on how your gun is angled, you get a nice steady stream of product going through the gun. Underneath, you've got a white gasket. This can be removed and cleaned and it actually just makes sure that you get a nice tight seal between the top of the paint cup and the bottom of the base of the gun. Now, as far as the front of the gun, you've got a little fan selector here. In its down position, it gives you a horizontal fan. In the center position, it gives you a small circular spray pattern. And in the upright position where it's gonna be most of the time while you're using it, it gives you that vertical spray pattern that you see me use in all of our videos. Now, inside is where one of the biggest changes is. The 3500 system, for example, came with a 2.0 needle. This gun, the Dip Your Car Sprayer, comes with the dip tip. Now, after a lot of research and playing around with ear licks, we've spent a lot of time on this, we found a very specific size and shape needle that really works well with the consistency and viscosity of Plasti Dip and Rubber Dip Spray. It really helps the atomization, really helps get a smoother finish. So every single Dip Your Car Sprayer comes with the new dip tip. Now on the back, you've got this little volume wheel here. This will actually increase or decrease the amount of product going through the gun. And in the application segment of the video, I'll show you where I like to have my gun set with this volume wheel to make sure the right amount of product is going out. Now obviously in the back, instead of having that hole like some of the other guns for the plastic push-in, this has the male counterpart piece for the quick connect so that it can lock in place and swivel all the way around. Now this gun, including the dip tip in front, the smaller dip tip needle and the increased PSI from the turbine is really going to give you a finer mist, better atomization, and at the end of the day, a much smoother and better result when spraying Plasti Dip. Now I want to cover one of the coolest parts about this system, which is the spare parts kit. Now when working with Earlix on this system, I wanted to design the system from the ground up as a dipper for a dipper. Now whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or a professional using these types of systems, just like any industry, whether it's HVLP, conventional guns, there are parts of this gun that are going to go through wear and tear and eventually need to be replaced. Remember, dip, and whether it's rubber spray, Plasti Dip, is a solvent-based product. Solvents and rubbers and plastics don't necessarily go hand in hand. They're not very friendly with each other. So whether you use the gun once a month or every single day, eventually down the road, you're going to come into a part that's going to need to be replaced. Well, the last thing I wanted you guys to do is be in the middle of a project, in the middle of spraying your car, and find one of these items that needs to be replaced and not have it on hand. I don't want you scouring the internet looking for people who have these parts. I'm taking everything that can go wrong with this gun, I'm putting it in your hand from the day one of the purchase. So let me go through what's in this bag here. The first thing you're gonna notice is there's an extra gasket. Now if these aren't cleaned or maintained properly, they can lose their shape, they can lose their form, and then the seal between the top of the paint cup and the bottom of the gun could be lost. You can lose product through there, it can leak out, or you can lose pressure. So you're getting an extra seal or an extra gasket from day one. Also, the air filter. I told you, after every single time you use it, you wanna clean it out to make sure you've got optimal airflow. Eventually, down the road, you're gonna be looking for a new air filter. You've got a brand new air filter in the spare parts kit. Also, one of the most critical pieces is these two small white rings right here. What these are are extra spare needle seals. 
If you've ever seen the, the 3500, for example, leaking out product through the trigger mechanism, that's because your needle seal has gone bad. I do not want you in the middle of a project needing a new needle seal and not having it. Every single Dip Your Car sprayer kit comes with two spare needle seals right off the bat. And then the last piece to the puzzle is the needle remover tool. As you're cleaning the gun, and I'll go over that in the next segment, you're going to be needing to remove the needle and give it a quick wipe down. Also check the seal. The best way to remove that needle without damaging it is the actual Earlix needle remover tool. It's in the kit as well. Now, not in the spare parts kit, but also included in every single Dip Your Car sprayer kit is the mixing wand. This goes right into a household drill and you put it right at the bottom of every single gallon, blend it up, make sure all the sediments, the metal effects, the tints and colorants at the bottom of those gallons are blended really, really well. It'll make sure you get a perfect and even finish every time. It's really important that you use this. So what we did is we took everything that you could use as a regular dipper and put it in your hands from day one to make sure that you have confidence in your product and make sure you never get stuck without having what you need. Okay, now I'm gonna take you through a couple of the simple steps to make sure that you set the gun up properly and mix the product properly, and we're gonna get ready to spray. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the paint cup, and I like to check that the pickup tube is facing in the right direction, and it's in all the way. Once you submerge it into Plasti Dip, it's gonna get a lot messier if you start messing with it then. So we're gonna push in, make sure it's pointed straight. We're gonna push the gasket down and make sure that the internal gasket is in the right place as well. We're gonna set the gun aside. Now we're gonna pop the top of one of our rubber dip spray gallons, and I've got the mixing wand in the end of my drill. Now one thing I like to do with the mixing wand is just kind of exaggerate the curve or the bend a little bit in each one of the blades. When it comes stock, it comes a little bit flat. So I like to open those up a little bit. It helps mix the product a lot better. So I'm gonna put this right down into the bottom of the gallon and then start mixing the product. Okay, let the extra drip off a little bit. Now I'm gonna fill my paint hopper. This is a 32 ounce paint cup and I'm gonna go right about to the 32 ounce line. We don't wanna overfill it. We wanna get it right to that 32 ounce line. Now what I like to do is just leave the paint cup right where it is and set the top of the gun on it and just rotate them both together. You wanna to go until it stops. You don't wanna over tighten it. Just tighten it until it stops and that'll get a nice good seal in there with that gasket. Now I'm gonna go over some of the safety tips and get really set up and ready to spray. Now I wanna go over some of the simple safety steps. Now remember, dipping is very easy and very user friendly, but it is a hazardous material and there are some steps you can take to make sure that you're using it in a responsible way. First thing is, make sure you have a respirator. A lot of our customers get the respirator included in the Pro Car Kit from the website. If you didn't or you don't have one around the house, go out and grab a respirator. You don't wanna uh, breathe in the overspray or any of the fumes from the product that we're using. Secondly, make sure you get some good separation between where you're spraying and the turbine. Now we made the hose 16 and a half feet long for a reason. There's no reason to spray the product directly next to the turbine. Give yourself a nice healthy separation there. And furthermore, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. A closed garage is not an appropriate place to spray your plastic. If you have to have some type of air movement, whether it be a spray booth, open some windows, some doors, you can find out what's responsible and appropriate for yourself. But I really suggest that good, fresh airflow is critical to this process. Okay, I've got my car surface here, and the first thing you wanna do is make sure the entire car is perfectly clean. You don't want any dirt, debris, grease, or oil on the car at all. Make sure it's perfectly clean, wipe it down really well, and then it's got to be bone dry. If there's any water or moisture on the car, the dip won't bond well, so you got a clean, dry car to start with. Now, I've got my DYC sprayer and hopper completely filled up, and before I hook my quick connect into the back of the gun, I wanna get my dials set. Now where I like to spray a car for the majority of the car is I like to have it at about 70% all the way up. So what I like to do is push it all the way to the top and then put my thumb on the top there and then I rotate it down to about a half inch away from the bottom. 
Now what you can do is push it all the way to the top there, get a little marker or a sharpie and mark a little section to where the top of the wheel is. Then take that line and bring it down just to about where there's a half inch away from the bottom. This will give you about 70 to 80 percent product flow and about a seven to eight inch vertical spray pattern. So next I'm going to lock in my quick connect hose to the back of the gun. I'm going to put on my respirator. I'm going to go turn on my turbine. Now when it comes to spraying, there's a couple things to keep in mind to make sure you get a smooth and even finish. First of all, make sure you focus on 50% overlaps. That means every single pass you go back and forth should overlap each other about halfway. This is going to make sure that the entire surface gets an even and consistent amount of product. Also, try to keep the sprayer the same distance away from the car no matter what the angle of the surface is. The first coat should be light, about 50% coverage. That'll give the product a foundation to grab onto as you start to build up the heavier coats. You want to get to a minimum of 4 or 5 coats for durability and peelability. Leave about 10 to 20 minutes in between each coat to make sure it dries before you apply the next one. Dip Your Car has hundreds of videos on our YouTube channel that go over the application process. So if you're looking for a more detailed orientation of how to apply the product to a car with different colors or different finishes, please check out our YouTube channel. Now I'm going to take you through some of the cleaning and maintenance steps to make sure that you get the best lifespan out of the gun and make sure that it's ready to spray and works perfectly every time you go to use it. So as soon as I'm done spraying, I'm going to unscrew the paint cup and after you release the paint cup, if you engage the trigger, it'll dump out any of the extra product that's inside of the gun. So we're going to let that drain out and we're going to take a microfiber towel. These microfiber towels, you either have them at home or actually every one of the Dip Your Car Pro car kits includes a microfiber towel in it. So we're just going to wipe off the extra Plasti Dip and product from the bottom of the inside of the gun just to make sure we're not dripping it anywhere. And we're going to put this aside for a second. Now obviously we want to take any extra or unused product of the rubber dip spray and we're going to pour it back into the gallon. Now what I like to do is let these paint cups kind of drain out fully before I go to clean them. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to put that aside for now as well. Now as far as the gun, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the pickup tube. I'm going to wipe that down completely and make sure there's no product on it. Then we're going to take out that white gasket that was underneath the gun and we're going to wipe this down as well. There's going to be product on the, on the top and the bottom of it. So we're going to wipe this off to make sure it doesn't stay saturated or doesn't dry out. I'm going to put this aside and then the inside bottom part of the gun we're going to wipe that clean with the microfiber towel as well. Any rag will really do. We just want to get all the extra product out of there. Now what we're going to do is disassemble the front of the gun. We're going to unscrew this cap here put that aside. We'll remove the air cap. Then we'll take off the little fan selector. You slide it into the middle setting and it'll pop right out. Now you've got this brass cap here which goes over the top of the needle. That'll be removed. You just got to kind of slide it out. We'll put that aside and now you've got your needle in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my needle removal tool in a moment and remove the needle from the front of the gun. I just want to go over something real quick. If you look inside this here, especially with a flashlight, you can see that at about two inches back there's a little breather hole there. Now that breather hole connects to the larger hole on the bottom side of the gun. You've got two holes here. The smaller hole where the pickup tube goes and then the larger hole is the breather hole. This breather hole has to remain open and clear for product to be picked up out of the paint cup. So if you're ever using the gun and you're getting airflow, but you're not getting product out of the, pick, uh, the paint cup, take a small device like a small screwdriver or a poker, stick it through the bottom here, and then watch it come out of the top on the inside here. And you'll see that little hole clear out. And sometimes some uh, d dip or debris can kind of clog that hole. You want to make sure that that remains clear all time. So we're going to take this aside and we're going to go ahead and get two things. We're going to get the dip your car fix it kit or some thinner that you have laying around and we're going to get the needle removal tool. Okay I've got my needle removal tool here. 
and I've got my Dip Your Car Fix-It Kit. Now the Fix-It Kit is just a blend of three different thinners that happens to work really well when we're fixing plastic, thinning it down, or cleaning our gun. But if you have any solvent-based thinners around like a xylene or a naphtha, that should work just fine when cleaning your gun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the needle from the front of the gun. Now this, this uh, needle removal tool simply slides over the needle and it'll catch on the little sides of the part of the needle and you can simply unthread it and unscrew it and then it'll be slide it'll slide right out of the front of the gun now what I like to do is after I slide it out I'll wipe it down with the microfiber towel and I'll make sure that I clean off the seal really well now remember when I showed you that you had the extra spare part kit you've got two of these needle seals included in it these are the seals that you're going to keep an eye on. Make sure it holds its shape. Make sure it's not deteriorating. We've only used this gun one time, so it'll be fine. But as the months go on, you want to keep an eye on it. And if it ever leaks out of the front of the gun here, or the trigger mechanism, that's when you want to take a look at your needle seal and replace it. So I've got my needle nice and cleaned off. If you have any dry dip on it, you can just dip the microfiber towel into the thinner and you can just wipe down the needle real quick and it'll clean it all off. You want to make sure that this is completely clean and open for usage. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with this little brass fitting that's in the front. Make sure that's nice and clean. Put that aside. Next is the air cap. This is actually what directs the air out of the front of the gun. If you ever have like a teardrop shape, if it's heavy on the top, heavy on the bottom, or if it's not even in your spray pattern, go to your air cap and you make sure that's nice and clean. So we're going to wipe that clean as well. Now, you've got all these pieces here. I like to let them air dry, let them be for about an hour, and then reassemble my gun. Sometimes if the gun is really, really dirty or it's got dip crusted all over it, you can take a couple of these items and drop them into some thinner, leave them there for a couple minutes and swirl it around. It makes it a lot easier to clean them up. Just don't leave them in there too long because the plastics can expand and warp and lose their shape. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reassemble the gun, pretend that it was out there for about an hour. I'm gonna show you how to reassemble the gun. You simply put the needle back in, use the needle tool. As soon as it stops, you're good to go. The brass fitting goes right back over the needle. Then you've got your fan selector that goes right back in. Make sure it goes up and down real easy. You fit your air cap over. You've got this little plastic cap that you screw back in. Now when you screw back in this plastic cap, just go until it stops. If you over tighten it, you can squeeze the air cap and actually misshape it a little bit and that can disrupt the airflow. So now we're gonna make sure there's nothing left inside the gun. Just kind of tap it out a little bit. I'm gonna put my pickup tube back in, put my gasket back on. Now that I've gotten all the dip cleaned off, there's one more very important step to make sure that the gun's gonna be ready to go and cleaned on the internals. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my paint cup and I'm gonna pour just about a half of a quart of thinner in there. And I'm gonna put the top of the dip your car sprayer right back on top of it, slosh it around for a while, try to clean out the paint cup a little bit. And now I'm gonna spray this half a quart of thinner through the gun. That's gonna force the thinner through all the internal pieces, make sure it cleans off all the dip so there's no dry dip in there, and make sure the internals, the needle, and everything is perfectly clean. After I'm done spraying the thinner, it's very important that you disassemble the gun one more time. At least take the paint cup off, take the pickup tube off, and set the gun upright somewhere and just let it be and let it dry. That's really important to let it air dry and let it be. Now this gun, we've disassembled it, we've wiped all the, the dip off of it, we've made sure we cleaned it out, and we sprayed thinner through the lines to make sure everything's nice and clean. Hang it up and it'll be ready for you the next time you go around. This is the Dip Your Car Sprayer System. The DYC Turbine, the Quick Connect Hose, the DYC Sprayer Handle with the Dip Tip, and the Extra Spare Parts Kit. This system in this configuration is exclusive to dipyourcar.com. We spent a lot of time and had a lot of fun working with Earlix, designing this system from the ground up, from a dipper's point of view, for a dipper. We wanted to make some changes and make some evolutions to increase the user experience, to make sure you guys get a better product, a better experience, and a better finish at the end of the day. The increased PSI from this turbine, along with the smaller dip tip, makes a really big change in the atomization and the smoother finish on your car or whatever you're working on for your project. So this system is replacing 
the 3500s and all of the Dip Your Car Pro Car Kits moving forward. It's also available as a separate system itself or the hose and gun are available as separate pieces as well. So if you have any questions at all, customer service at dipyourcar.com or if it's during business hours, you can always call in. There's somebody to help you out there as well. If you have any comments, questions about this system, I'd love to hear from you directly. You can always get me on Twitter. It's Fonzie. Enjoy the new system. This is a huge milestone for Dip Your Car and Dippers Everywhere. I'll see you on the next video.